Okay, time for some streaming. Game we got for today is one I have played before. It's called And All Would Cry Beware. A uh, little funny story about this game. This is actually one of the reasons I started doing this channel. I don't remember where I saw it, but somewhere on Reddit or maybe YouTube or <laughs> I don't know, MySpace. I saw someone talking about the games in the Racial Justice Bundle, and one of them mentioned And All Would Cry Beware. It's on one of the first couple of pages, so it's not that surprising people have checked it out. And they mentioned having gotten stuck, and they said they couldn't remember where, but they started to describe, like, what they remembered, and I realized they were talking about the prologue. It, it's gonna come up real soon, they mentioned... Uh, an elevator that they couldn't get down. And I told them, shoot the cable that it's attached to, and it'll drop. And then, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking, you played this game for three minutes. How about you play it all the way through now? I didn't say that, but that's, you know, the conceit of the channel. Come on. Okay. Okay. Down the bombed out streets of ruined Los Angeles, you ran. The kill gang in hot pursuit. Well, not that kill gang. It seems like you made a wrong turn. Perhaps it was simply survival instinct that led you to seek shelter. But perhaps it was fate which led you to seek shelter in the derelict offices of Wayfarer Inc. A damsel with a dulcimer and a vision I once saw. It was an Abyssian maid, and on her dulcimer she played singing of Mount Abora. Samuel Taylor... Coleridge, Kublai Khan. So, this is a fairly uh, typical boomer shooter. You got some pretty fast movement. You got a decent number of uh, pretty basic guns for the most part. And uh, it's, it's a little... It's a little hard to see, but your health is... Up in the top left, those little green bars, that's your health. So instead of uh, a more Doom-like health bar where everything does different damage, you can basically assume that everything at least is going to start doing one damage and maybe do more later, because there are health upgrades. Because this game has a light Metroidvania aspect to it. It's not like the main focus. The game is not really that open. But there's a little exploration, there's a little backtracking and getting powers. So here's the elevator. That's it. That's as far as the person got, or maybe a little bit further, because you can get above it. Like, are, are you kidding me? Because you can do that. That's it. That's as far as the person got. Like, that's unbelievable. See a video recording of the room you are currently in. Before the steel gate stand 16 men and women. Six of them are dressed in security uniforms, standing behind the computer terminal. Roughly where you are now, you can see a technician. There's still time to change your mind, the technician says to the group. You can evacuate with the rest of us. The 16 men and women look at each other. After a while, one of the men in a security uniform speaks. You know as well as I do that this might be our only chance to see if this works. Flip the switch, close the door behind us, then get out of dodge. The security technician reiterates, just to make sure, Grant, if you make it, you'll be stranded until we can get back to the laboratory. And who knows when that will be, if it's even still standing. And if this all works, there's no guarantee you'll all survive. Grant looks around at his 15 companions as if giving them one last chance to back out. Satisfied, he turns back to the technician and says, it ain't enough to survive. We've got to make it. The technician sighs, presses a few keys on the keyboard, then shouts to a second technician standing in the booth to the right of the gate, disengage locks. Lock is disengaging, replied, responds the technician in the booth. Let's assume that was the intent and not a, a typo. Initiate the exp- The first technician pauses as if reconsidering his words. He corrects himself. Perform the ritual. Lock engaged. Gate must be unlocked before attempting procedure. So we've got to continue on. I'll shoot the mans. I like the bullets in this. They're nice and chunky. You can, like, 
really good a good feel for how well you're aiming. It's the little things, you know. So many times, a lot of first-person shooters, like, won't really have bosses. They're not very good ones, at least. This is kind of why... FPS bosses are just sort of holding a direction and slowly turning the mouse while holding down the fire button. In a lot of cases, you gotta do something special if you want to make a memorable and good FPS boss. Um, a simple thing is to have, like, shockwaves come out, so at least the player has to jump. You know, that helps. But, I mean, it's... That alone is not enough. Security personnel, Mulroney Grant, Chief Officer... Rebecca Daniels, Tim Nylon, Frank Taggart, Maria Perez, Jason Cole, Jeremy Carter, Todd Fall, Commander Reynolds, Nell Garland, Charles Elwin, James McGallery, Margaret Alver, Theo Arkin, Inami Sugimoto, Arnold Madam. If this were like a big long game, it'd be like, here's the characters you're gonna meet. We're not gonna meet. The main gate, the main gate, the main gate, the main gate. So here's what we'll be spending the rest of the game. Are we dead? Holy shit! I don't feel dead, although to be fair, I've never been dead before, so I wouldn't know. We made it! We goddamn made it! I hear the sound of cheers. We should save the celebrations for once we've taken stock of our surroundings. You're right, We're ex we are setting foot on a new world after all, but god, it's a paradise. Order, sir? Alright, we need to find a place to set up our base camp. Let's make like the ancient Greeks and pick somewhere high up. It'll give us a good vantage point of our surroundings, and it'll be defensible in case we're not alone in this world. Oh no, we're not alone in this world. Oh no, there's pyramids here. Illuminati, etc. So you can't get through there yet. capsule and the nanomachines from a thin protective form of you got health the cones Bonk. so I feel like that prologue section was uh how do I put this was sort of, sort of preempting. Let's call them redditor comments. Like, oh, you just made the enemies be basic geometric shapes because you can't uh, make any sort of decent enemy. It's like, well, I, me, I made the little drones. Those are about what is expected for a game of this fidelity. No, I made the geometric shapes. I might uh, imagine the developer saying for artistic purposes. Looks like you've got your work cut out for you. Huh? Oh, yeah, it's fucking incredible. It certainly is that. It's hard to believe. Lucky you, plenty of plants. No sign of intelligent life so far. If something doesn't turn up, I might be out of a job. <laughs> I'm sure Minami and Arnold could put you to work. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. If anyone sp spots some carved arrowheads or happens to trip over a Rosetta Stone, be sure to let me know. Hey, Jeremy, what do you make of all of this? Huh? Hell, man, I, I don't know. I won't know until the sun goes down and Margaret and I can take a look at the night sky. We don't know where we are, how far, or how fast we traveled, how we traveled in the first place, how if we traveled. What do you mean, if we traveled? Look where we are, dude. This ain't where you were a few minutes ago. How do you know it was a few minutes ago? I mean, no, listen, hear me out. It's a serious question. We don't know how the, how the ritual that got here started, or that got us here worked. Hold on. The only reason we knew it could work is because we got a message from light years away containing instructions. The message was in Russian, claimed to be of human origins. Okay, so if we believe that, we know it worked. Because how else did they get that far away, that fast? We haven't been out of the, our solar system, but a handful of Soviets managed to get 30 feet 5 light years away. So how far did we move? How fast did we move? It felt instantaneous or near enough. Does that mean we beat the speed of light or bypassed it somehow? If we translated instantaneously through space, who's to say we didn't also move through time? 
We're dealing with the unknown here. As unknown as you get, man. We don't know shit. We could have traveled 30 light years in a millisecond, or 30, 300. We could have stayed in place and jumped 50 years into the future. Or the past, as the galaxy spun around us. We could be millions of light years and, actu and actual years away from home, for all we know. Maybe, just maybe, when the sun goes down, we can look into the night sky. Margaret can compare it to her charts, and if it's not completely unfamiliar to us, we might be able to find out what it is we did a few minutes ago. If the sun goes down. Exactly, man, that's all I'm talking about. Now you're getting it. Maybe if this alien archaeology thing doesn't work out, I can take up astrophysics. Alright, alright, let's not get carried away. I could always use a lab assistant. <laughs> Thanks for the offer, but I'm not going to count myself out quite yet. We barely seen what this planet has in store for us. Maybe we'll run to maybe we'll get to the top of that cliff top and see a crumbling city or an ancient ruin. Or a very much not crumbling city armed with weapons unknown to man and a severe dislike of strangers. Keep in mind that our first priority is survival. There will be plenty of time for research, studies, and excavations later. But that's only if we find a way to survive on this world. Don't run off half cocked because you're impatient to make a discovery. We've got to be cautious, at least until we know what sort of threats this planet holds. I hear you. It's just hard to believe that this planet could hold any sort of threat. I mean, look at it. It's so idyllic. Yeah, that's what frightens me. So, like, there's a story. It's not, definitely not the focus. But there was, there was a, a, a little creative writing juices flowing, you know? I've seen a lot worse. I have seen a lot worse. Okay, hold on. I know I can put this three somewhere. Take the bloody tiles now. No, no, hold a minute. I had it. Anyone got an hourglass? Just... Get someone get the duck! Ah, uh, oh, fuck. What happened out there? Period. Not a question mark. We made first contact. Go get Theo. On it! What the hell happened? We got jumped by something. It started flying at us. Jason took a nasty fall. We managed to get away from the hostel. I got the bastard. I'm telling you, I got the bastard. I came as fast as I could. Jason, try to follow this light with your eyes. Okay, you're gonna be alright. Rebecca, Grant, help me move him into the infirmary. What did this? Some native flew it out and knocked him off the cliff. Looks like a broken leg. I won't know for sure until I get a better look at him. Did you get a look at what did this to him? If we're dealing with an alien life form, I need to know if there's any chance he got bit or stung by anything. I don't think so, Doc. Are you sure? It was the strangest thing. It happened pretty fast, so I didn't get a good look at it, but it didn't look like anything like what I'd think of as an animal, even an alien one. No mouth, no teeth, no claws. It was just a shape. A solid shape. When squares attack! Right now it is time for... Octagons? Oh, those hexagons. I can't really tell when they're spinning. It's hard to tell at this angle. When they attack! Incidentally, you can just, like, run past them all. I mean, they're not that fast. But then you sh you're, like, trying to explore around with guys just, like, constantly following you. And they... Enemies in this game don't really give up. <laughs> Normally, uh, enemies in an uh, open level design game like this will only go so far and eventually they'll just retreat and, and stop trying to kill you. Not in this game, though. They just keep going. They got a, they got a beat on you and they ain't giving it up. Got safe ground. I guess those enemies didn't really see me. <laughs> Just barely close enough to hit that one. Just look around real quick before I head into that cave. Uh, there is up. Alright, let's do the cave first. Cave sucks. I have played this before, but, I mean, it's been a while, and it's not the most memorable game, you know. Uh, 
It was this way. And Xanadu, Koopla Khan, a stately pleasure dome decree. It took up the better part of the week to set up base camp. Me and me and Arnold naturally took the lead, and sure we had the basic necessities accounted for. It's far from the comforts of Earth, but it'll be a relief to sleep inside an environment-controlled geodesic dome instead of in a flimsy tent. Nella started planting the seeds we brought from Earth. Hopefully they grow soon. A man can eat condensed rations for only so long. We'll gradually build the other facilities in the coming weeks and months, but for now we have a home on this Xanadu. New place, new music. Hey look, it's the shockwaves I talked about. How nice of him to have an uh, attack you can't just circle straight around. And to have probably too much health. And from what it seems, uh, no weak points. Hitting him in the head does not seem any more effective. Oops. Game kind of ate my jump there. Boom fist. Got that shoot gun. Now you can break the green vines. And that's what I mean by this game having Metroidvania aspects. Lieutenant Daniels, come in. Commander Mulroney, what did you want to see me about? Que period, not question mark. It's about this honeydew. Sir, it's been a week. Have you felt any ill effects? No, sir, quite the opposite. I feel great. Lighter. More energetic. Stronger. It's like the doc said. That's good, that's good. Now, officially, the honeydew is a mysterious plant with unknown effects that we are maintaining a stance of caution with. And unofficially, this could be it. This could be our big discovery from this place, what makes the whole trip worthwhile. This is a plant that naturally improves the physical state of whoever consumes it. If things blow over back on Earth, and the boys back home get that portal open again, this could be what will put Wayfarer Inc. on the map. But we need to understand it better. Lieutenant Daniels, Rebecca, this isn't in order. You can say no if you'd like. I'm asking you first because you've already safely consumed it. If this is the effect from taking a small bite, I want to see what eating more of it could do. Are you up to the task? Yes, sir. Understood. Thank you. Oh, and Rebecca, be careful. It is nice that you don't have to worry about ammo in this game. I can just be like, plow, 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 blim, 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 blow. This game also has a really nice sense of verticality to it, and I definitely do dig that. Grant, I want to talk to you about something. Shoot. The geometrics. My research has been stagnating. I've been stalking the damn things through the forest for months. There's only so much I can do with distant observation during chance sightings. These things represent a whole new form of life. It's clear that they aren't made up of the same stuff we are. So you're saying they aren't carbon-based. That's right, or rather that's the problem. They likely aren't carbon-based, and they don't have any of the same features that life on Earth has evolved. They must have some sort of sensory organ, but it's unlike anything on Earth. No eyes, no ears, no nose, but it goes deeper than that. If, as I suspect, they aren't carbon-based, if they don't have cells or DNA or any of what we consider the building blocks of life, then what are they made of? This is our first chance to compare two completely different forms of life. This could be the key to understanding what basic principle leads to life in the first place. Alright, alright, so you're doing important research. What do you need? Look, I know we decided on caution in regards to the honeydew until we could get more information, but I think the advantages it could give me would be more than capable to get close to the geometrics, maybe even capture one alive. And if you're thinking about it, we'd be killing two birds with one stone. I could take controlled doses of that honeydew. Theo can keep track of my vitals and we can learn more about how it works while I figure out how the geometrics work. I think we can work something out. Whatever you do, do not stop eating the bone powder. Go back this way. Yeah, 
it's just that. Okay. That's much better. Shotgun does tend to be the best weapon in games like this. Could use this mysterious plant to give me power. Or you could just shoot them. That's weird. Have you tried just shooting them with guns? Seems to work well for me. the noises they make. They kind of purr. Can't break that. This leads back here. I guess I could go back to the octagons. I suppose they haven't respawned. I imagine the, the yellow tang is not safe to step in. Ouch. And that's the... The red gooey scoo. Now where am I supposed to go next? Yeah, you can't, like, crouch or anything. It's weird that this seems like a dead end. I do vaguely remember getting stuck here the first time, too. Oh, there we go. That looks promising. Basically, as long as you shoot while close and duck and weave, then you can get through these areas pretty quickly without risking any damage. Since enemies are largely more melee based, except these guys, who stay further away. Enemies that are more melee based, I mean, you take a shotgun to them, that'll work out pretty well. But if you can get close to a shooter type, then that works well too.
There's no benefit to killing enemies other than temporarily clearing uh, an area out of danger, but there's also no cost to it, since you have infinite ammo. Again, okay, earthquake machine. It's pretty cute. It's pretty inventive. Pistol is about as good on those. Unless you can get right up on them. Ooh, that's spooky. Now here's something. Rebecca, I found something. What? Sorry. You ever get the feeling you're being watched? I guess. I could have sworn I saw something up in the clips. I'm just being paranoid. Isn't that what you pay? Isn't that what they pay you for? Strictly speaking, they don't pay me anymore. Anyway, did you say you found something? Hell yeah, I did. Check this out. Are these? Yeah, it looks like these trees have got fruit on them. Huge one is that. They look like melons. I cracked one open. They look like the melons on in the on the inside too. If they're safe to eat, they'll be a nice change of pace from our rations and the handful of vegetables that we've grown so far. Well, how did we find out? Well, we can do two things. First, I stick this thing into one of them. The chemical scan doesn't show any known toxins or carcinogens. What's the second thing? Now I do things the way our ancestors did. I take a very small bite of it. If I throw up, we know if it's poison. If I die, we definitely know it's poison. Otherwise, we can move on to larger quantities. I'm not so... Oh, hey, this is really good. It tastes like honeydew. Like, the best honeydew I've ever had. Hopefully it doesn't come back up, but I don't feel any adverse effects. Alright, let me try that. Take just a tiny piece, like that. Damn, that is good. I haven't had fresh fruit in months. Did you see that? What? I got the same feeling you had a moment ago, like we were being watched. I looked up and I could have sworn I saw a flash of turquoise up in the cliffs and then it was gone. All right, let's check it out. Melon watchers, melon eaters. Watching people eat melons like a pervert. Guess I'm going this way now. This is backwards. I don't think this is backwards. Okay, let's stop getting so greedy for hits. Ouch. Ouch. This one's not going so well. Oop. Oop. Yeah, well, I can still shoot. Looky there, my first death. Yeah, he's the shotgun. This is neat because circle strafing isn't strictly right. The shots aren't really aimed at you. There are just some blind spots in the pattern. And that's where you gotta get to before, uh, before the spikes catch up to you. And it's safer to be at a long distance, even though... You want to be at a short distance because your main weapon's a shotgun. That's like good design. That's like risk and reward and all that jazz. Oh, how about those moves? Look at me go, doing this without getting hit. Now I got a machine gun. 
Feels a bit weak, but eh, it could be worse. Feels like it's probably the same strength or maybe a smidge weaker than the pistol. You can see it now. This place was made for me to find it. It's like the magician said. This place is created from our minds, from our dreams. And my dreams are strongest of all. Why else would this place conjure up Mount Abora? Why else would it deliver me the honeydew? I can feel the change occurring within me, but I will control it. I will master this change. The honeydew is only half of the puzzle. Any fool could see that. I must also drink the milk of paradise. Those acid seas would burn a mortal man from the inside out, but strengthened by the honeydew, I will be I will survive and be purified. Okay, so this leads backwards. So let's go forwards again. See if there's another fleshy wall that I can use the machine gun to get through. I do recognize, like, some parts of this game, just, like, not a ton. Okay, it doesn't look like there is anything else in, like, this direction. Well, let's continue to check. The machine gun is a bit inaccurate. Yeah, even if you, like... burst fire it still has the same problem and it, it's kind of short range so it's a little on the crap a little on the crappy side but it's still probably better DPS against bosses than the shotgun gotta get some honey deer Yeah, what do you think of that, strange orb? Interesting that the walls don't stay down. Yeah, there was nothing else along this path, so... It's time to go backwards, then. find some more fleshy walls. Ooh. Ooh. Getting a little crunched there. Ooh, getting real crunched. works quite well on the discs. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay, moving on. This first, then double back and hit the octagons. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty safe to just stay at a distance from these guys and ouch. 
mostly safe. And shoot at them from here. As opposed to getting in close and using the shotgun. Which would be bad, because you just get tagged by their AoE. Hey Jason, how's it going? A bit tired from being cooped up in this bed. But all in all, I can't complain. It gives me more time with my guitar. I guess lugging that thing here paid off. Yeah, yeah. Hey, now? Yeah? Did you ever... Did you ever consider eating more of the honeydew? Fuck no. But why? It made you stronger. Gave you more energy. Even said it fixed your back. Dude, this is specifically why we do a taste test. To see if it has any dangerous or unknown properties. I got lucky I'm not hurling my guts out into the next cot. And yeah, I feel better than I have in years. But all that means is this plant changed my physiology in some way. That's a hard pass. No go. Do not eat. I just... You wanted to know if it was worth trying a little bit of it to get out of that bed sooner. Yeah, I guess so. Look, don't worry about that. Your bones will heal. It'll just take time. God knows we have plenty of that. I guess you're right. Damn right I'm right. Now come on, play me something on that guitar of yours. Alright. Take the road to distant land to journey to find tomorrow, and climb the dragon mountain called a brave its struggles ever bold. But if you find you're there too old, or at least you... so you've been told. Take the madman at his word and journey on to find a stranger in hopes of learning something new and hopes the passions will ensue. But you find that he is you when you don't know what to do. So journey onwards through this land and always fi find, try to find your solace and take the monster for the man. <coughs> That's my response. Maybe someday you'll understand as you hold the dragon's hand, the secret buried in the sand held within this ancient land. I call this one foreshadowing. Almost fell right into the spicy water. Oh, I remember these. You can only shoot them from above. Shoot it from exactly there. Yeah, pistol's best for this because it's nice and accurate. Kill him, just push him back. Uh, that's. Oh. F. Yeah, I was about to say that's, uh, that's too far to jump, and then I, uh, get knocked in. The towers are pretty flimsy once you actually start hitting them. Get off of me. I guess the shotgun does work pretty well on those. Not so well on those. I'll move on. Yeah, machine gun's generally the best for those eyeballs. Oh, oh but there's still enemies following me. Oh, blurg. I only have 
two health left. So I should definitely focus more on not taking damage than on trying to deal damage. Make it easy. Ow. Well, looks like I gotta do that all over again. Bummer. All right, let's try just running through and see how that works. There's nothing really in the way. You just have to be concerned with enemies following you into the boss room. Ah, oh, yeah, the shotgun does pretty well against against this. Ah, I still got followed in and now I'm back down to two health. Okay, now this time don't immediately jettison into the drink. Off to see the wizard. Jeremy? He was actually here just a moment ago. What? Came in a hurry. Barely would talk to anyone. Wanted to see Commander Mulroney. What? And he left just as quickly, carrying a bag of something. Now I've got to go. If anyone needs me, I'll be down in the caves. Oh, give me that HP. So now with, uh... Yup. There's rocket jumping. I'm not very good at it, though. Luckily, the rocket doesn't actually hurt you. It does really good damage. Big ups. I made it through. It's just that doing so killed me. Hey, now they can't all be winners. So many things trying to kill me. There we go. Got them all. Oh, God. What is... Oh. It's Frank. Is he 
he's dead. But look at the scratches on him. It looks like he was mauled to death. You think the geometrics? Not any of the ones we've seen. They could probably bludgeon someone to death, but those energy projections they have could fry you, but not in one of them has claws or teeth. So what did this? I guess there's some sort of animal on this planet we've got to see. Rebecca, she was with Frank. I hope she's not... Don't finish that sentence. We'll find her. No, not Frank! He said insincerely. He said, unsure of who Frank is. Well, I did say we needed to get down into the caves, like or someone would be in the caves. And there was a heavy rock wall in the caves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't touch me with that. Ooh. Well, the explosion does deal some damage. It's mostly the initial impact that really hurts things. see you. Come sit down. Look, never mind that right now. Think about what you're doing. What are you talking about? I heard you came by the dome for a chat with Grant. Todd, you're my friend, but I'm sorry. This is none of your business. Look, things have started to get pretty crazy. Rebecca's God knows where. Charles has gone missing as well, and Tim's gotten weird. I feel like things are starting to fall apart, but now I know they must be if you're ready to mess with that stuff. I... Todd, I'm so close. I can feel it. I'm so close to understanding what this place is and how we got here, but my brain just won't take that final leap. I feel like it's staring me in the goddamn face and I can't put the pieces together. So I got this idea. Jeremy, this fruit was created by this place. It changes you. It changes your mind and body. Maybe if I consume it, it, it will change me. Make me more able to understand this place. Put me more in tune with the logic of this place. You're my friend. I can't stop you from eating that honeydew. I know that. But I also know that if you eat that honeydew, you won't be able to stop it until it gives you the answers you need. I'm just afraid one day I'm going to walk down here and there won't be a friend waiting for me. There'll be a monster, rooting around in his cave. Goodbye, Jeremy. I hope I see you again. Let's go say hi to Jeremy! Whoops. I, uh, I, I meant to do that. <laughs> Throwing for content, you see. Is that what they, is that what the kids call it? It's funny how the shotgun does kind of remain the best weapon. <laughs> Hitting those enemies make them get all wiggly. No! Come at me, why don't you? In this place, with time on my hands, I've begun to understand the ritual that brought us here. 
The original ritual was an accident, or a twist of fate if you prefer. And thus in recreating the ritual, we recreated many elements which were accidental. It was difficult to separate the signal from the noise, the magic from the superstition. But I've begun to understand the pattern that brought us here in the us here to this place, although I begin to suspect that this is not the right word. Before we performed the ritual in a large laboratory with expensive equipment and hundreds of people. Now I have, by fits and starts, begun to perform it in a small scale on my own. No attempt yet has had the success of the ritual which brought us here, and the places which these small spells have brought me have been transitory and reeking of unreality. But they are a start. If I can improve my technique and better understand the underlying patterns, Perhaps we will get somewhere, as it were. I suppose this makes me a magician. How are things in the underworld? Check this out. What is that? Oh shit! We call it the Fire Warp. Well, the name checks out. I'm getting closer to understanding the portal ritual. And in the process made this. I've carved an intricate pattern on the inside of the orb which links it to the place which is perpetually ablaze. When I activate the orb, it draws fire from that place and casts it forth. To be fair, it's a lot of work to get roughly the same effect as a blowtorch, but the principles involved are fascinating. Uh, how did you carve the inside of a stone sphere? Uh, now that's the trick, isn't it? That's some good magic. Yay! Whoops. Didn't notice that. Glad I found it. Yay! You stole fizzy lifting drink! Uh, sure. Let's explore around a bit before going to the dome. Ah, yep, there's one up there. Almost. There we go. Todd! Rebecca! Don't sneak up on me like that. I haven't seen you in a little while. I uh, missed you back at base. How are things out here? I'm surviving. I would ask how things are back at base, but I can guess. There are a couple more beasts in the wild. Yeah, Tim and Grant. Things finally came to a head. Alright, I gotta ask. I've seen you wandering around scattering these data chips. Why do you keep editing clips of our audio logs and scattering the data chips around? Oh, I think I'm in a video game, actually. Look, there are two possibilities. Either eventually someone finds this place and will be curious about our story, or we are truly cut off from humanity and our story will never be told. I've got to believe in the former. In that case, whoever comes here will be able to get glimpses of what our life was like. If we leave behind a full audio log, that will be days and days worth of pointless audio to sift through. I'm just helping future archaeologists. But why hide them? Well, to provide context. Give them glimpses of our experience while they are themselves experiencing the planet. Oh, maybe I just like the idea of playing games with these future people. Make them work for their voyeurism. You're gonna do it with this conversation, aren't you? Well, of course. Where are you gonna put it? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? And that gets to what I'm getting at. Where I put it makes so much difference. If I put it near where we emerged, our hypothetical archaeologist will see it at the start of our story. Be aware of the artifice from the start. If it's not as fun if they know that these have been left behind intentionally as breadcrumbs. I could put it at the heart of the camp, where a hypothetical archaeologist will likely end up. That would make this the end of the story. I'm glad you claim along for the ride, but I just know that this story you saw was incomplete, biased, constructed, arranged. It takes the air out of it a little bit. Anyway, our archaeologist deep down knows that by th know that knows that by that point, but would nonetheless like to be able to sit with the story itself and not worry about how why each story was told. No, I think I'll put this audio log somewhere out of reach. Make them have to find it. It's not in the front or in the back, but below. Make them dig deeper if they want the story behind the story. God, you're a fucking weirdo. 
Would you have me any other way? What a weirdo. Any other snacks and secrets? Uh, let's go up to the up to the who's of what's it's. Ah, uh, that's too high up. The fire is really strong, by the way. The first one since like the very beginning. Oh, looks like there's a chip over here. Tim, I wanted to run something past you. Sure, what's up? What if you saw a video game? What do you what if Samuel Taylor Coleridge in his laudanum induced haze foresaw video games? The fuck? I mean, come on. That poem is straight up a video game. It's a journey in a fantastical land that ends in a goddamn boss fight. Like it ends with a guy with flashing eyes and floating hair that you have to literally circle strafe around. It tracks. Go. I bet if he had been born a few centuries later, Coleridge would have went straight to his computer and opened up Game Fusion Studio after his stream. Fuck the shut up, god bastard! Ah, yes, that's the where the honeydew was. I don't suppose there's any reason to burn it. I guess not. Fire hot, fire good. It does make it kind of hard to see, but other than that, it's just really strong. Ah, that's backwards. Not that forwards or backwards really means anything anymore. Uh, can I get up here? Nah, it's a bit too high up. What if you foresaw video games? Feels a little silly that almost all the health upgrades are available only at the end of the game. Can't shoot a different gun until the uh, previous one is done. You get anything from Frank's black box? Just that the bastard had it coming. But the way he was carrying on, if that monster hadn't shown up, I'm sure Rebecca would have killed him herself. No, not Frank again. Or, I guess, yay, Frank! No. Get away from me. I don't know you. Hey, that made it. 
Back to trying to get up to the dome. Up this way-ish. down there. Probably don't want to fall in that, huh? That did not appear to work very well. The orb is quite nice, though. Ouch. Except against the other orb, the shoot orb. That is the trick, isn't it? I imagine. Welcome, Traveler. My name is Rebecca Daniels. As you may have gathered, I'm the last member of this expedition still living on this world. This world is a halfway point. Our resident magician opened up a true portal. My companions have moved onward to somewhere where they can have a fresh start. Due to my condition, I remain behind to guide travelers and to guard this tree. They may pass freely through the portal and join my companions in the city they've built. It is a harsh world, but they've made a life there. Be aware that it is a one-way trip. There is no return portal. However, should you attempt to pick the fruit of this tree and return to Earth with your spoils, you'll have to go through me. I sincerely hope you do not pick this option. I'm sorry, I truly am, but you left your life behind the moment you stepped through that portal. If I let you go, there's no guarantee you won't sell the location of this place to the highest bidder. What if I sell it to the lowest bidder? Next thing I know, I've got a weapons manufacturer's private army storming the dome in search of the honeydew. It's too, nah, it's too great of a risk. It's one of our discoveries on this world. If you consume the fruit, it changes you. At first, it makes you stronger, faster. Eventually, it changes your bones, your body, and your brain. It turns you into something else. Any super soldier company would pay a fortune for it. That's why it must not reach Earth, and why I cannot allow you to return with the knowledge of its existence. For decades, Earth has been torn up by wars, pestilence, and destruction. I cannot in good conscience hasten this process. For those of us who didn't want to see it take root on Earth, tried to destroy the tree. But it just kept coming back. The only thing we could think to do was move it to here where it could be guarded. I ate the fruit of the tree. I was lucky compared to the others who did likewise. I only turn into a beast when driven to extremes of emotion. However, this makes me a liability among my companions. So I elected to remain behind and guide people along the way keep them from making the same mistakes we did. Sorry to hear that. Oh no! Extremes of emotion! Yeah, but have you considered Fire Orb? I'm personally quite a fan. Got him. <laughs> yummy. I want it. Yummy, yummy. Honeydew in hand, the final monster defeated, you begin the long journey down the mountain. You find the portal back to Earth and crawl through. You're greeted by a detachment from the Kill Gang! With the advantage of surprise on your side, you open fire, and the first two barbarians go down. A few more, hearing the noise, run in to investigate, but your newly found arsenal makes quick work of them. You make your way to the elevator shaft, where a crude rope ladder is hanging down from the upper levels, presumably left there by the Kill Gang! Scouts, you begin climbing and prepare yourself for a battle. The Kill Gang is in full force, but... It seems the sounds from the lower lab didn't carry, as they are taken by surprise. 
Their initial salvo decimates their forces. However, the remaining barbarians are now getting into fighting positions. Their crude shotguns and battle axes are no match for the military-grade weaponry you find in, found in Xanadu. However, their numbers are overwhelming. You take a bullet to the leg and fall. Another bullet enters your shoulder. You refuse to be defeated now after you've traveled so far and are so close to riches. With your lifeblood pouring out and the kill gang closing in, you take the one option available to you. You smash the honeydew against the ground and begin to eat. Already, you can feel the wounds closing and your vitality returning. You continue to eat. You can feel your strength increasing. The kill gang doesn't stand a chance against you now, no matter how many of them there are. You could tear them apart with your bare hands. Your last conscious thought is to shove the seeds of the fruit into your pocket. So twice, five miles... So twice five miles of barren ground with walls and towers were girded round, the beast roamed the streets of old Los Angeles. The beast became a meat myth among the gangs that made their lives in the ruins. His range was to be avoided at all costs. Eventually, these myths made it out to the right ears, ears prone to curiosity if not outright belief. They sent well-armed men to the parts of town even the gangs would not tread. They lost many in the hunt, but eventually felled the great beast, then began the task of determining how this beast came to be. Many were the laboratories lost in the bombing, and many were the competitors after their secrets. They cut open the beast, and from its belly discovered seeds bearing no resemblance to any known on Earth. It took the chemists and engineers very little time to put them to use. And thus humanity stumbled with determination ever closer to its final days on Earth. While elsewhere, a new story began. Incidentally, if you go through the portal, there's nothing there. It's just like an empty world. There's no city. Uh, that's what I, that's the ending I got the first time. But I figured, hey, I should have a final boss, you know? It is a fun game. It's just a nice one hour, straightforward, root and toot, point and shoot sort of game. And I'm happy to have played it. Mm. Mm, the full stretches. Honestly, the most fun part about it is the end, where, like, you got the the rocket for the rocket jumps and the fire for really strong short range attacks and it almost feels like a shame you have to do so much with just like pistol and shotgun like every other fps but oh well that's about it for today uh for tomorrow as i have no idea without looking at the schedule oh yeah pale kachexia 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 i'm gonna say it different every time it's a visual novel I'll have to drink